Hey brothers and sisters, I don't ever know if I'm going to do another video, so this could be my last one too, but I really feel like I need to share the great things that God is doing. I like to say, to God be the glory, great things He is doing, and you know, every single day is a day that Jesus could return, and yes, I always think that today is the day that He could return. And then, and then, you know, he wakes me up today, and I've just had this most amazing time. I went down to um, a hospital that I don't normally go to, and God orchestrated that I was going to be there by myself, which is wonderful for me. And Lexi and I were there for two hours and 45 minutes. And so I want to tell you about these wonderful, wonderful people that I met so that you'll be encouraged that we're not the only ones out there. Um, I also had on the 21st, I think, I got, you know, I, I'm a numbers nut, and so um, I get messages in the numbers, in the Strongs. So, they're really, you know, I can't, I can't give all that God has is showing me, but I want to give God the glory and I want to tell you, I had a, a vision and three dreams. I had gotten up, um, I can't even remember what, uh, I think I got up at 537. I did, I, I've actually tried to like journal these things out. Um, I got up at 537, can't remember what 537 meant. Did, um, hmm. Oh, I got up at 5:37. Did some uh, did some things that he told me to do, and um, and then I went back to bed. And I had when I start when I mean, you know, I'm no vision expert. <laughs> I've not had that very not many visions, but I have this feeling that comes over me when I, I'm awake. My eyes are closed. I'm going back to bed. I think I was going back to bed around 10:30. Um, and you know you want to call that a nap whatever but um, I I can tell that a vision is coming on it's like my spirit gets really heavy inside me it feels like it's like sinking down into into the bed kind of and then the vision was a sketch black and white sketch of a cross and behind the cross it was kind of funny behind the cross was a downhill skier all tucked in position you know like he's having a good time um it's it's like a it's like watching a movie except that it's not he's not going down the hill he's staying right behind the cross and we are right behind the cross we are we're in the church age behind the cross and at the foot of the cross so he is at the skier is at the back behind the cross a little bit to the right the cross is to the left and he's behind the cross and he's all happy and tucked in position and looks like he's in a downhill race like the race is almost over is what i felt like it was and then suddenly he turns into a dove and flies away it was awesome so then i fell asleep and as i'm falling asleep i'm thinking well if that was something i'm supposed to remember i'll be able to remember it when i wake up so then I had a dream about um, a loved one who I told her that she wasn't going in the rapture and that she wasn't going to go to heaven unless she repented because God had these certain sins against her. So basically I was warning her of the judgment to come and, uh, and it's a loved one so I won't really talk about who that is. And so then I had a second dream I mean, this is really quite amazing to me to have a vision, a dream, and then a dream. So the second dream was with the Pope, which is really pretty nuts because I've only dreamt about famous people. I dreamt about Melania Trump not going in the rapture on um, Revelation 12 sign day. Then I dreamt about Donald Trump on May, uh, excuse me, on September 21st. So this is this is a it had been eight months to the day since I'd had the dream about Donald Trump and I had heard eighth day at 522 then in this dream on the 21st eight months later 
I dream about the Pope, and I'm standing outside a breezeway like he's, he, it's, it's him, me, and uh, a man in a suit, I guess like one of his assistants, and, and the Pope, I am telling the Pope, you are the false prophet, you are of Satan, you know, I'm just laying it at him, and he comes at me, he's got some kind of medallion on his chest, like a necklace, and he picks it up, and he like, is coming to bring it into my face, and it looks like it looks like it's got lots of points on it. I don't study what the Pope wears, but um, Andrea, Child of the Most High, she sent me a picture of it, and it looked like a sun kind of thing, like a golden sun kind of thing, but I thought it had red and uh, blue on it, too, and it did not have a triangle in it. But anyway, he starts to bring it at my face, like he is like using his crucifix or whatever, you know, like he's going to give an exorcism of the Holy Spirit out of me <laughs> and I go off and I go boom and I laid him I went boom and I hit him hit him right at the medallion and I hit him in the chest and he fell back now he did not fall down but he fell back and he looked at me like he was afraid of me and he turned and he he walked quickly away and the assistant who had you know the assistant was in shock that this woman had just <laughs> hit the Pope and he said, you're right. I was like, yes, I am. And so I'm feeling really good. So I wake up and I'm thinking about the two dreams and the vision. And I'm thinking, you know what, God, I'd like to just stay here in the rapture until, stay here in the bed and just sleep until the rapture. That would be really, you know, really nice to me because I've got, um, I've got a hospital visit on the 22nd. I got one on the 23rd and I got one on the 24th. That's a busy week, a busy week. Normally I'm only doing two a week. So um, then, so I fall back asleep, and then I have another dream. And this dream, which, okay, this dream, I haven't written down yet, this dream was having a square black cell phone. It was square and black, but it was flat, but um, it looks like it could represent the Pharisees with their black boxes that they wear on top of their heads. Uh, I believe that holds the Ten Commandments or maybe it holds all of the Mosaic Law. We're not under the Mosaic Law. We're under the Law of God, the Law of Jesus, the commands of Jesus, which in the Great Commission, we are supposed to make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and to teach others to obey Jesus' commands. So if anybody's not doing that, then they're not doing they're not obeying the gospel they're not they're not preaching the gospel because that's what we're supposed to do we're supposed to preach the gospel and do this because that's what our marching orders are from our commander and master the lord jesus christ so anyway in this dream i have my husband's cell phone it's it's got a problem it needs repair and it's a flat black square and i get a phone call i've called i'm, I'm responsible for getting it repaired <laughs> And which is a normal thing that a wife would do and I'm about to get in the car it's not my car I'm about to get in a car to leave when I get a phone call from the repair of the phone the people the technical support repair people and it's an older man I can tell he sounds like a very nice older man so then he says um, I need to know what your phone number is which I gave it to him and then I think he asked what my social security last four digits of my last of my social security and I said it's 2888 which I think is pretty funny you know I've had that for a long long time and 888 is Jesus it's 505 right now five grace um, I, I, I was I gave him my social an 888 in fact I mean I see I'm, I see a lot of 888s that means Jesus Christ so then 2888 is like going to Jesus Christ. And then he says, okay, like the third question I need to ask you is, have you ever been divorced? <laughs> uh, and I said, well, I laughed. In the dream, I laugh. And I'm like, well, yeah, I'm divorced, but I'm not really, I'm still married. And anyway, in the dream, I'm telling the guy over the phone, correct doctrine that I am keeping my vows 
till death do us part because I made those vows in front of people, my husband and God. And I care very much about obeying God. And so I give, it, I give him the whole thing about what the Bible has to say. And then the man says, you have done well to answer it that way or something to that effect. You have done well to, to say that. And so then I woke up and I was like feeling like pumped, pumped because I have been on this mission for 14 years to try to correct what the church is telling people that you can get divorced and remarried and God is okay with that. And that's what the church tells people and that is not the truth. It's not the Bible. So, um, so then yesterday, uh, so yesterday I had a hospital visit and it's, it is, it's hilarious to me because I'm looking for the rapture any day. And, uh, and so yesterday would have been 522. He had, told, he had told me eighth day at 522, which I believe was eighth day circumcision of the heart. And 522 would be Galatians 522, the fruit of the spirit. But yeah, okay, it's a high watch day for me that it could be um, May 22nd. Plus here having these things the day before. And so I go, I go to, um, I go, I, I, I'm going to the hospital and this is the hospital that is across the street from the church where I got saved, the church where I got born again, that turned out to be a church full of uh, false professors. In other words, they all professed to be Christian. They honored God with their lips, but their hearts were far from them. And when I got born again in March of 2005, they wrote me a letter to leave the church. They didn't want anybody that heard from God because I had gone down and told them, hey, God spoke to me. And God is speaking to me every day and and I just do what he says and he's told me to come and be baptized um, the sermon was the sermon when God told me to go be baptized was on uh, Matthew 24 excuse me Matthew 7 verses 24 through whatever it's about the parable of I think isn't is it a parable no it's, it's the teaching about how we're supposed to build on the solid rock the firm foundation instead of sinking sand when the storm comes, we'll be able to survive the storm. And that was when the Holy Spirit told me to go be baptized again. See, I'd gotten baptized at age 12 based on a decision, not being born of the Spirit, not being, not repenting before the baptism, not, not feeling godly sorrow for my sins. So I did, I did end up later on, I ended up did, getting baptized. But anyway, at this church, this church is the church where they had allowed my husband to be a deacon you know 40 people in the church and this is a baptist church and like 40 people knew that it was going on and when i had told the pastor he the head pastor did not know but when i did he he asked me if i would take him and his wife out to lunch and so i took them out to lunch expecting him to pray for me which he didn't do and then he expected me to pay the bill and then this is the same man that I, his wife and I and my husband had taught the newlywed class for years at this church about marriage. That's what we had done. So um, he, the man, was loyal to my husband with the money instead of being loyal to the Word of God and doing what the Bible had to say, which is 1 Corinthians 5. I've got it open to it because it just keeps on coming up because this is you know this is the same thing as anybody on youtube if anybody's on youtube that says that they are a believer we are not to so associate with anyone who indulges in sexual sin not talking about the unbelievers who indulge in sexual sin or greedy or cheat people or worship idols you would have to lead the world to avoid people like that i meant that you are not to associate with anyone who claims to be a believer yet indulges in sexual sin, or is greedy, or worships idols, and worshiping idols is fake Jesuses, or is abusive with their words, they're abusive, they, they uh, spit on you and, and in their words. Their words are uh, wicked against you while they're claiming to be a believer. They don't have the fruit of the spirit of self-control to control what there comes out of their mouth right they don't have their tongue controlled 
so they're abusive or is a drunkard or cheats people cheating people out of money I mean that's the thing um, goose 777 I really love that brother uh, and he was wanting to get some uh, help for uh, for another guy on YouTube but but and, and he, he was saying I wasn't being compassionate but I have given so much money I I have given so much money to people on YouTube on people um, you know that God would send me to like you know hey go to that person that lives behind you and go give them money so that they can get a divorce for instance I you know I gave a woman five thousand dollars she had no money and she needed to get a divorce to get out of her remarriage adultery and I gave her five thousand dollars this Michael Mutaskis or whatever on YouTube I gave him thirty five hundred dollars and then afterwards find out that he believes in reincarnation and in earth angels so you know I gave Todd it, it is finished I gave him over seven hundred dollars it's the thing is people take advantage they they are cheating me they're cheating me while they're claiming to be a believer they are cheating me out of of uh, out of my money they're cheating me out of my money and it's not my money it's it's God's money but but look I'm this is like cheating a widow out of money because I'm like a widow I'm a I am you know I am dependent I'm dependent and I'm really in a way I'm worse off than a than a widow because a widow could go, could go and get remarried but I can't because that's what the Bible says and so someone to cheat me out of their out of my money in and to be using it for ungodly things while claiming to be a believer I'm supposed to break off the fellowship and it says don't even eat with such people and to think that you know like I gave um, I, I gave Debbie Long several hundred dollars and then the next thing you know she's having a on on camera I mean a live stream with Todd it is finished doing the communion the adulterer doing the communion you know I could name a lot of names I could name a lot of names and I really and I'm not here to rant about it but it says it isn't my responsibility to judge outsiders but it is certainly your responsibility to judge those inside the church who are sinning God will judge those on the outside but as the scriptures say you must remove the evil person from among you it comes up constantly and this is why I've been with this dealing with this for 14 years because I tried to get the church to do it for my husband for the good of his soul so that he wouldn't go to hell and the, the Baptist Church wouldn't do it then I went to Andy Stanley's non-denominational church he wouldn't do it I met with Andy Stanley twice Andy said um, you don't think that God is really angry with your husband do you and I said listen Andy God is angry with the wicked every day that's what the Bible says Andy would not even allow me to open the Bible in the meeting I, I met with him twice two and a half hours both times and he was like God's never spoken to me and and um, you're not going to open the Bible and I said okay I'm not going to open the Bible but guess what the Bible's coming out of my mouth and I gave him the scriptures and he's like you are so spiritual I mean seriously big big problem there even though I did get baptized there and I was there for six years basically God would tell me what chair to sit in and to take a Bible and then after Andy preached his false gospel and his false teaching then I would tell the person next to me listen this is what um, the Bible really says and I did have the time where I walked in late after God had told me that Clint was an adulterer and I said okay God I'm gonna pray for him and and I walked in you know there are like two or three thousand people on either side of the of the sanctuary of, of the it's not a sanctuary of the church and there's like uh, two different sides and I walk in in the dark and when the lights come on I am sitting next to Clint the adulterer and the sermon was on Noah and I said God this isn't gonna go well if you think that I as a woman are, am gonna rebuke a man 
And God said, I can't find a man here to do it. And I said, okay, I'm your woman. I will do it. And when Clint, when I confronted Clint, he said, yes, I'm, yes, I'm committing adultery. He says, so what? Everybody else here is too, which is true, which is true. There is more adultery going on in that church than there is out in the world, okay? And it's all because there is nobody holding believers to account. The devil has taken over the church. And anyway, so, so the good news, <laughs> the good news is I know for sure, I know for sure that I'm not wrong about this doctrine. And I am calling it, I believe it's the linchpin, the linchpin of obedience of who is truly, truly walking with Jesus and who is not. Because if you think that you can mock God and that you're some special case, I, I mean, when I think about it, uh, oh, I just see that, I don't know. Anyway, Ru uh, Russ Wade, Russ Wade channel, he was, um, I was in communication with him and he said that he knew that he was a born again believer hearing from the God, hearing from God, Holy Spirit goosebumps and everything. But he said, but I'm a special case and God has told me that I'm going to get a new wife. And I was like, Russ, no, 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 no. That would be adultery. And he's like, well, I know it's adultery, but I'm a special case. God has told me I'm going to get a new wife. So all I can do is warn. I warned. I used to talk to him on the phone. And then God told me he was moving to Texas to go live with a couple. And I called him and left him a message and said, this is what God has told me. And I found out later, um, I guess maybe two or three weeks after I had called him, that he had moved to Texas with a couple, but he had moved out and he had gotten remarried. Okay? I pray. I still pray for him. I pray that he will come to repentance and get out of that and, and realize that he made a, a big mistake. Because God isn't going to go against his word. He's not going to. He says all remarriage is adultery. Okay, so today, um, like I got all these numbers things going, but then today I woke up at six, well, no, excuse me, tell me, let me tell you about the hospital visit. So yesterday, I did the hospital visit, and as I was coming out, I went to the grocery store, and as I was putting the dog back into the car, this man came up to me with, um, telling me about that he has a golden doodle. And see, to me, everything is a God appointment. It's just the way it is. So I said to him, um, I started talking to him about, you know, that I'm, that I do this, I go visit people in the hospital because I love Jesus and I want to love others. And I said, you know, do you know Jesus? And he said, yes, I do. And then I said, is there something you need prayer for? And he said, would you pray for my mom, Reba? Um, she has had cancer for five years and she just fell and broke her hip. She lives in Ohio. So I said, well, yeah, how about we pray now for Reba? And so we prayed, you know, at the back of my car, we prayed for Reba. And, um, and then I said, you know, are you reading your Bible? And he said, you know what? I have not been reading my Bible. And after talking to you, I believe God put us together today so that I would get back to reading my Bible. And I said, that's exactly how walking by the Spirit always is. Um, you know, uh, tell your mom about who prayed for her and maybe Reba will come on and watch this but I also gave him Reba if you're wondering I gave him this little booklet uh, save yourself some pain which has the gospel in it but then it also talks about what you need to do once you've been saved what you need to do you need to read your Bible every day and do what it says and not think that it doesn't apply to you um, so that was really fun for me because that was an evangelism experience where either it was an evangelism experience or it was, um, you know, I can't remember the man's name, but e either it was an evangelism experience or it was what he was saying, that he is a believer, but he's not, um, tr he's not uh, as tight with the Lord as he used to be. And I do, be I do believe that's what it was because just a really humble and gentle man and not at all... Um, you know, willing to listen to a woman, just very humble, gentle man. And we talked about, you know, the problem of the church 
and uh, how he's not in the church and I'm not in the church. So we talked about that. So anyway, so that was really awesome. Then I come home and spend time on the phone with some of my sisters and I go pretty late. I go to Kroger thinking, okay, I know it's late, but I think I'm going to go to Kroger. I go to Kroger and I go in and I see a man who's stocking and the lights are turned down low. And I said, huh, it's kind of dark in here. He says, well, actually we turn the lights down every night and I just never have been that late at night. So I'm looking around like, okay, maybe he's the one I'm supposed to talk to. And, and he starts quoting Proverbs to me. So I'm thinking, wow, God, this is cool. I'm going to meet another, another born again believer, right? But it turns out, as I start talking to him about um, divorce and remarriage, hello, it's 522. I love my 22s. Five is grace. 22. Um, 22 means light, I think. Anyway, grace and light, that's pretty good. I said to him, um, I started talking to him about uh, my faith and believing the Bible and doing the Bible and everything and I was so I was like I'm so happy that you know your Bible and he's like oh yeah I read it to my children and then he said I've got a 21 year old and a four year old well I've got to ask I said so is it the same mother and he said oh yeah I've been married the whole time married the whole time yeah wonderful woman yeah just a surprise baby I was like oh okay and then he says but you know um, divorce and remarriage isn't wrong it's it's forgiven by God and I was like, really? He said, yeah, my cousin, my cousin is divorced and remarried and he has another child and he's really, really happy. And he's a Christian. He's a born again believer. He's a Christian. And he says, and then we, get, and he says, you know what? We get along really well. He understands that I'm Jehovah's witness. <laughs> I was like, oh God, oh God. Okay, bye. I didn't, I just was like, no, you know, if you would read, if you would read the Bible on divorce and remarriage, you would find out your cousin is in error. And uh, I just came to give you a warning. So bye. I go to get in the car and my mileage, I mean, this was just hilarious. I go to get in the car and this is on May 22nd. My mileage is 522. And what are the odds of that? What are the odds? And then I get to, um, I drive home and I thought it said 523 but this morning when I got up to go to the hospital it is now 524 well how that fits this thing is that some of the most I would say the most convicting passage in the Bible to me and to many others is is uh, Matthew 7 21 through 23 24 is the beginning of the story which God told me to go be baptized. But Matthew 7, 21 through 23 is very convicting for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear because it says, only those who obey the will of my Father will enter heaven. Only those who obey the will of my Father. Not your will, but God's will. And many will say, well, Lord, Lord, I was doing YouTube channels. I was looking for the rapture. I was singing in choir. I was teaching the Bible. I was teaching the Bible. Um, I was in ministry. You know, I was um, I was getting all these donations and doing things with God's money and all of this, you know. And then in verse 23, he says, Go away. I never knew you. You who continued in your iniquity or your lawlessness or your sin. It doesn't matter if you think you know God. It matters whether Jesus knows you. That's what it says. And then in John 3.36, if you read that in a lot of different translations, it's really not very good. It's not very correct in the King James Version. It's a verse that you really need to study. Um, and if you look at it in the interlinear, it does say to obey. But basically, in the other translations, it says you must believe on the Son in order to have eternal life. And then it says, but if you don't, trust and obey basically in in the son you are under the wrath of god you're under the wrath of god it doesn't matter if you believe 
if you don't obey. So that's why this, you know, it's the old standard trust and obey for there's no other way song is a very good thing to think. It doesn't matter even if you know what the Bible has to say about divorce and remarriage, which is a very narrow, narrow thing, I know. But if, if you know it and you don't practice it, then you're not obeying God's word. So, great things. I know, how, how long is this? Okay, so then this morning um, I wake up and it is, I'm, I'm waking up and it's before dawn. And I'm like, wow, you know, God, I really would like to go in the rapture. I really would like to go in the rapture. And, um, yeah, and so, you know, and I'm just like, I really would like to go in the rapture. The 22nd's over. It could be the 23rd. It could be the 24th. It could be the 25th. It could, it could be any day. And I, uh, I was like, wow, you know, it'd be really cool if it was before sunrise on the 23rd. Kind of like the new day beginning at sunrise on the 23rd. And... And then I'm finally like, you know what, I'm going to get up and go do some Bible study because that's what I like to do. And I get up and I see the time on my phone. It's 630. Well, see, that's the reason why I have to keep on talking about this because it turns out that 630 means divorce, to send away. Okay, that's why I have to keep on talking about it. This is my testimony. Now, um... So I read, you know, I was reading over the verses, and this, you know, I'm not bad-mouthing my husband, but I need to tell you, if you're going to tell me that you weren't abused, or excuse me, that you were abused and I wasn't, um, I was reminded today of, of one of the things that did happen to me. After, after, we, after I said, listen, I've got to separate, because things were being demanded of me that, um, you know, I just couldn't do uh, anymore. So anyway, we had, we had separated. We moved out. He moved out on February 2nd. So there's a 222. 222 has been a very important number in my life. So he moves out into his apartment. I helped him, you know, I helped him pack up and leave. And it was supposed to be a time for us to both seek the Lord. Because we both thought we were Christians. And I end up getting born again. That's when I received the Holy Spirit on the floor of the shower. And I... I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I received the Holy Spirit. And then we were we were going to go out on a date. So we go out on a, you know, we go out on a very nice date. And I'm excited because I'm thinking, you know, God's going to save my husband too and everything is going to be wrapped up in this nice beautiful package. Everything's going to be wonderful. And as we were driving home on the expressway, you know, going I don't know, 55, I don't know how I don't know what the speed limit was. He started telling me that when we got home, that when he would go to drop me off at home, that he was coming in to uh, have sex with me. And this, this was so uh, abusive to me, and the fact that I did not fear dying, I opened up the car door on the speeding car. And if it weren't that the car was going as fast as it was, where the wind was pushing the door, or you know, if by some thing that somehow that, you know, that Satan had wanted me dead or God wanted me dead, I would have fallen out and died on the road. But it turned out that when I, I told him how serious I was, that he wasn't going to be doing that, that I opened the door to try to climb out of the car and he ended up pulling over and I got out of the car. Now here I'm wearing my dress clothes with my heels and I start walking home. I'm starting to walk home on not a sidewalk, but on in the road, and I'm like wobbly and all of this stuff. And he's claiming that I'm drunk and crazy. Who is walking on the side of the road in heels, drunk and crazy? I wasn't. I wasn't. It was. It was. And he ended up calling my calling his sister and having. I'm, I'm yelling. I'm yelling as I'm walking down the thing. No, you will not do that to me. And I'm yelling. I'm, I am. I'm yelling. And then it turns out he calls my mom and my mom comes and gets me. But I had walked. I had walked a long way. So, and I'm just giving one example of abuse. I'm not going to go into all the details. But, but abuse in the Bible, if you are being abused, your option is to separate and to remain single or else be reconciled. It is 
1 Corinthians 7, verse 10 and 11, straight from the Lord. So, you know, since I wake up and the number is 630 and that is what it's about, that's why I'm here talking about it again. Because I don't want anybody to miss the rapture. I want everybody to understand the, how serious God is about this. And then I go to go, wow, okay, God, here I am. I'm, I'm still being, I'm still on this, you know, um, battle on the front lines in this battle for this, for your covenant of marriage. And then I go to see what time the sunrise is. And it is 631, a minute after the time that I had awakened as I was thinking about it. So I can't even remember what the 631 is. Anyway, then I go to the hospital and I just had a wonderful time. So I'm going to try to tell you about some wonderful, wonderful people that I met. Um, now, as I'm going to the hospital, I sang, um, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship. I didn't have my eyes closed because I was driving. Worship you, oh my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Okay, so Jesus, uh, so the Lord had told me that I needed to start asking for his favor, asking for his favor. And it turned out that... Um, the scriptures of Second Thessalonians, I want to say it's Second Thessalonians 2, verses 16 and 17, have favor in them, I believe. Uh, but this was after he had told me about the favor. So, um, so I was praying for him to give me favor as I was going into this hospital situation. And he always shows up. He is very good. So the first man that I spoke to just a, I mean, I'm just so blessed by these people. First man that I spoke to, he's got a new golden doodle puppy. His 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 uh, arms are all punctured from baby teeth marks of the puppy, and they named the puppy Georgia. And here he's he's a cancer patient, okay. And they named the the puppy Georgia, and I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm a tenth generation Georgian, and that's really cool. So I started talking to him. He was, um, he had. He never got PTSD, but he was telling me my dad had terrible, he was a raging alcoholic, terrible PTSD, and it wasn't until I served in the uh, army myself that I realized, and he had been on all kinds of duties. This man had 40 years in the army on all different kinds of assignments, and he says it wasn't until I got in the army myself that I realized why my dad, he was not a mean man. It was that the alcoholism was because he had PTSD and then he told me the most amazing thing he said my dad was at um, Pearl Harbor my dad was at Pearl Harbor and he saw horrendous things happen that day and he never got over it never got over it and then you know for him himself to be in the military and you know it's like he is so positive he's just so positive I mean I know he's a believer I know he's a believer because he's just like, well, you know, um, this is this cancer is just what it is. It's not, you know, if 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 it's my last day, it's my last day. I don't live, I don't live clinging to my life. So just a really wonderful man. I'm just so excited. Then I go up to the second floor where I'm supposed to visit, and I see a, a woman and her daughter in the hallway, have an incredible visit with them, and the lady looks at me and she says something about. Um, uh, I believe in the power of prayer just like that just now I am wearing a cross and uh, Christian women in Atlanta we wear we wear makeup and jewelry and crosses and but she was she brought it up and so I had a wonderful time talking with her then I go in to visit some of the patients and uh, one of the men there sweet sweet man loves the dog and you know Lexi's having a great time I mean I was there for two hours and 45 minutes right this man had had, I don't know how many heart surgeries, but he said, he said he has 21 stents and he is, he was supposed to be having heart surgery today. He has an aneurysm on his heart, but at least it's not an aneurysm in his brain because that would kill him immediately. 
and so this is something they're going to be able to operate on but at four he said it was i think he said at 403 this morning they found out that i i suddenly got pneumonia so my surgery's been dis, dis, uh, excuse me my surgery has been delayed but a positive positive man his wife is in there her name was robbie I, his name was alan so pray for robbie and alan and just a really really positive man i'm so blessed by that i go to see some other patients the whole thing i'm just it's like everybody is a blessing to me and it's just wonderful so then i go into the waiting room where the uh people are who are the family members are so i'm walking to different families and the reason why i want to tell you this is i end up meeting this family and the woman's name is wanda and she starts talking about the power of prayer and I said, oh, yeah, you know, I pray on the way down here. I pray on the way back. I pray for everybody I'm going to meet, and I pray for everybody that I've met. And then she says, well, the prayer of the righteous availeth much. And I said, listen, you know, I'm not supposed to be sitting here talking that much about my faith, but I, I don't care. And we ended up having this incredible conversation. And the amazing thing was the last number that I had looked at before I went to the hospital was 490 i think it was 490 i'd looked at 409 which means murderer manslayer and i can't remember what it means in the hebrew and i had looked at 490 which means widow well it turns out that <laughs> so here i had the divorce and i had the widow right in the same day a widow can get remarried that's why, I mean, I know that. That's the kind of remarriage that God allows. It turns out, Wanda is telling me that the woman that's in the, in the surgery is her stepdaughter. And I'm like, uh-oh, uh-oh. And she says, listen, this is a crazy story. I, my, I lost my husband, I think she said in 2007. I lost my husband. He died. And this man, who is now my husband, his, his wife died. And we've been remarried to each other for um, nine years. And it turns out that my husband and his wife were first cousins. Is that not amazing? And there I am sitting there talking with her about um, divorce and remarriage, about church. You know, we were talking about, it turned out the man, I, I was shocked. I thought he looked like about 75. She said he's 88 years old. <laughs> He looked great and you could just see the spark in his eyes and there his granddaughter is standing uh, is sitting there with him and it was just like I felt like I was with family and and the man um, told me that his or she told Wanda told me the man's son was a Methodist pastor I mean I can't make this stuff up y'all and if you're still watching maybe you, maybe you love people and you're interested in people's stories because that's what I care about People's stories, God's stories. What are we going to do when we're in heaven is we're going to talk about God's stories, right? So this man, his son was a, uh, a Methodist pastor, and he had a widow maker. You don't even hear people talking about that. But he ended up having a massive heart attack and died. And I was like, well, that was how I found out how old this man was. I said, well, you know, he must have been pretty young. How old was he? He said, well, he was 60. <laughs> And I'm like, 60? He goes, yeah, I'm 88. I'm like, oh, wow. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So I'm having just this wonderful time talking with that family. Then I move to the next family, and I can't make this stuff up. It turns out uh, it was a mother and her daughter, and the daughter starts telling me about her children. And it turns out she is the pastor's administrative assistant at a church in Dawsonville, and of course, you know, I'm always kind of leery about that. And she starts talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Um, talking about how God uh, told her to work at this church as the administrative assistant. And how this pastor is not like other pastors. That he says he is not going to preach any of his own opinion. He only preaches the word, uh, expository preaching, line by line. That's what he does. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I said, you can't find an Atlanta preacher that does that. So I started talking about Andy Stanley, and she's like, oh, yes. We, she says, I've got friends that go to that church, and I tell them, you know, that they're in a false teaching church. And, um, and I was just really encouraged because um, 
Oh, I forgot to tell you, Wanda also knew about the end times. Okay, she knew about the rapture. She knew about the end times. She didn't necessarily know that it was about to happen, but she knew about it. Um, and then Heather was saying, you know, that this preacher, this pastor, actually, she said, you know, in the different spiritual gifts, she said, she said he has the gift of teaching. He is a teacher. It's not a, it's not a uh, preacher. It's a teacher, and that's the kind of church that God told her to be in. And she said the amazing thing was she was she was in the church working for the church and she had had it because the pastor the pastor of that church was such a hypocrite and a liar that she wasn't she was looking for another job and she ended up getting three job acceptances to get out of the church position on the same day and then God but the new pastor had started like three weeks three weeks he'd been pre preaching and then God told her that the new pastor was legit and right and he is preaching the narrow way and he's preaching hell and he's preaching heaven and he's preaching repentance and I was like wow so um, I'm going to be checking out I got the church's name and I'm going to be checking out um, their sermons on their website he said that she said that they were thinking about starting to get a Bible app so that his sermons would be able to go out. And he had just preached on Ecclesiastes, which is very interesting to me because you don't hear a lot of preachers preaching on that. So um, anyway, that was just awesome. I was feeling really, really good. And the whole thing is that I'm not disappointed. I It's like he keeps showing me I'm in his will and I'm encouraging others. And I even told I even told Heather as I was leaving, I was like, I you know, this time I mean I'm standing up almost this whole two hours and forty five minutes, almost. And I said, Listen, I love doing this because I love how God puts me in touch with other believers. And they really are out there. They really are. And if you ask for God's favor, he will show you. And yes, I know I'm in I'm in the Bible belt, right? But there are a whole lot of people in the Bible Belt who are not truly born-again Christians. So, uh, let's see. Oh, and then it was funny. I was coming back. When I got home, I took a picture of the odometer again. And, you know, I've got so many screenshots. I could do numbers. I could do numbers videos all day long. I could do, like, you know, when, and when I first got on to, the, to go to the hospital, it turned out that the phone number of the truck in front of me had a 7, a 222, and an 8, and a 22, and an 8. You know, I mean, I, I, could, I, <laughs> I could just do all this stuff. Um, but when I got home, my odometer was 553. So, 166, 553, 5 double grays, 3 the trinity, but when I went to see, I was like, I can't remember when I even did a, the last video. And it turned out when I did the last video, it had 353 views. So there was the 5 and the 5 and 3 and all that. And I love the numbers. And I know a few of y'all do too. Uh, and let's see if there's anything else. I don't even... I, I, hmm. I just want to make sure that I talked about everything I was supposed to talk about. I... Let me check my screenshots just to make sure. Oh, oh, when I came, thank you, God. When I came out of the hospital, um, okay, so here I had looked up, whoops, come on, adjust, camera, adjust. Are you going to adjust? Okay, there it is. See, this is, the, this is the number that I had looked up in Strong's right before I went to the hospital, a widow. So here a widow and a widower had married each other when they had been married to first cousins. And then, come on, can you do it? And when I came out of the hospital, my mileage was 166.539, and I looked up one, one uh, I looked up 539, and it means to confirm, support, and you know, just pause it here if you want to do this, some work on this number and look at that. Believe, believed, believes, um, established, firm, fulfilled, all assurance, 
Isn't that just a wonderful number? Trustworthy. Just a wonderful number. And I thank God for it. I thank God for it. So God bless you. You know, uh, do some Bible study. Do some Bible study and do some Strong's if that's a good way for you to do Bible. And just acknowledge Him with everything you... You know, it, do, it doesn't take too much to say to somebody, Hey, can I pray for you? And see where it goes. See where it goes. We still have things to do, it seems. So God bless you. I love you. And uh, be strong and courageous. Okay? Bye-bye.